The Lumix GH6. Let's go. So this is the box the Lumix GH6 comes in. You can see it's just a very generic kind of black box. There's really not a whole lot going on on it. You got a couple pictures, just says 4K on it, micro four thirds, and that's really about it. In the little plastic bag, you got your manual, tells you to register your device, and then a little advertisement for the Lumix G series. Tells you to read the instructions before anything, and it looks like we have the camera itself. And then a bunch of other accessories that I'm gonna just take on out. So first thing is just the little Lumix strap. Just a nice little strap in case you wanna just carry it around right off the bat, you don't have to go buy one. It also comes with this little brace right here, or bracket right here. It's a plastic bracket with like a metal screw on it. You attach it to the side of your camera and then you can thread some cords through it and it just keeps the cords from pulling out. It also comes with this cable right here. I gotta be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what this cable is used for. Looks like it comes with another cable. This is a USB to USB-C. We also have the little power brick itself. Looks like it comes with its own little standalone battery charger, which is really nice. And it plugs in by USB-C. And the other hand can go right into your little power brick. Then you have yourself a little battery charging station. Last, the little battery itself. And this obviously just slots into the charger and it is charging right now. And now for the camera itself. So it came wrapped up in this sort of fabric, plasticized material. Feels very static proof. There's no fuzz or anything gonna fall off of it. Just da da da. And then this is the camera itself. Obviously it doesn't come with the lens. I gotta say it's a really nice looking camera. It feels very solid in the hand. All of the buttons on this feel really solid. All of the knobs have really nice click feel to them. I really do like how this top knob right here, it actually gets locked into place. So when it's popped out, you're able to spin it. And then when you pick the mode you're on, you can pop it into place and this thing isn't gonna spin around if you accidentally brush your thumb up against it. On the back of the screen itself, it is plastic and it says Lumix on it. You flip it out, it's a flip out screen and it can also rotate around 180 degrees. You can also go ahead and flip it back and now you can view it this way. It's also able to pop out like this to pull away from the camera body itself. So if you wanna have it at a different angle, you can go ahead and do that, which is really nice. Another thing for the screen is it's not just gonna freely keep spinning and spinning. There is a limit. When you turn it this way, it's 180 degrees. And then when you turn it this way, it's like 90 degrees. So you can't just kinda force it. You end up just breaking it off. <laughs> So that's just something I noticed. On the side here, we're gonna notice that it actually has a little grill. And this is actually because there's an internal fan in this unit just to keep it cool so you don't have to worry about record times or anything like that. Uh, there also is some pullback little rubberized things right here. You got full size HDMI, you got a USB-C for charging or power. You also have a headphone in, then you also have a mic in right there. And everything closes really nicely with these kind of rubberized material. So it definitely feels like it's gonna be sealed from the elements. On this side of the camera, you can see that there's a little door right here. And if you push down the button and open it, you're revealed to a couple slots. You got the SD card slot, which is what I'm gonna be using. And there's also CF Express, which is a nice option. And the door seems to be really solid and it seems like it seals nicely. There's also this little remote right here, a little rubber door over this remote hole. There's also this really tiny cap that you can unscrew on the top right here, but I'm definitely just gonna keep mine on and leave it there to keep it nice and sealed. This camera is a lot heavier than my last camera, but it's really not unbearable, but you could totally walk around with this thing. It's not gonna be a problem at all, but it's also very dependent on whatever lens you put on it. Obviously, bigger lenses I mean this thing's gonna be heavier but that's really up to you and what you're going for it's really solid and it feels like it's it's quality i don't know when i pick up a heavy camera it just feels more quality for whatever reason on the top right here we have this little guard that you can push down this button you slide it out and it reveals where you can put in your flash and other accessories like that i really do like how this actually locks into place so you know, once it's in there you don't have to worry about it falling out so i'm just gonna keep mine in there and there is a rubberized grip for the eye, so you're not just putting hard plastic up against your head or your glasses or whatever. So if we notice on the bottom on the battery door, there's like a little rubber circle and you can pop that out. And that's actually where you wanna run a dummy battery cord through, which is what I actually use a lot. So I'm happy that has that. And then the little battery cover opens up and it feels like there is a little foam material to seal it up. Also, we're gonna notice on the bottom next to the little threaded hole, there's another secondary hole right here and I actually really like this. This is for if you've ever used like a tripod or a mount that has 
like another separate little hole and that lines up with that other hole to keep this thing locked in place so it's not going to be spinning around on top of the tripod let's get a peek on its inside it's always interesting to look into the eye of the sensor it's so cool the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is these little metal jingly bits right here. I wish it was just a solid piece, like this loop right here, or that you could remove them. It's the cutest little lens. All right, so for the lens, you wanna line up the little red dots, and you screw it into place, and it should click. There we go, we got the lens on there. Open it up, and it only fits in one direction. It's got the nice little lock right there. Off with the cover, out with the screen, on with the camera. I wonder what this is, something's blinking in there. I think it's like an IR detector letting you know if your face is there, and that's exactly what it is. <laughs> All right, so back to here. The first thing we're greeted with, it says set time zone. Set the clock, all right. No memory card. I'm using my memory card right now. It looks like there is an accelerometer letting you know the level of the ground. The live feed, if you can tell right here, it looks really nice. It's uh, it's really clean. You can also see it is a touch screen and it feels very responsive. Do, 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 do. There's also this little nublet right here which you can kind of use as a little mouse cursor. There's also the manual focus on this and when you focus it kind of crops in a little bit on the screen to show you it and it shows you where the focus is with that little blue kind of fuzzy area so you can know where you're in focus and where you're not. This camera has a very intense menu. I'm really not gonna go through the whole menu just because that's probably its own video and would take like an hour or something like that. Now let's go ahead and take this out into the wild, get some real life footage of it, test some things out, and just see how it goes. All right, this is my first test footage on the GH6. I'm using just a built-in mic. I'm recording everything at 4K 60. Hopefully it's some beautiful image quality. I saw the autofocus there have a little confusion. Whoa. Let's see how it does at fast movements. All right, today I'm walking outside with my 12 to 60 this is probably the standard kit lens that you're most likely going to get if you buy this body with the lens. All right, so we're going to zoom in all the way. The lens stabilization, the power OIS is off. And we're just going to sweep to the right. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And we're going to sweep to the left. And it is just so solid. I definitely recommend getting a lens with the power OIS. It just makes handheld so smooth. Here's another example of the OIS. This is with its off. And then this is with it on. You can just see how stable it actually is. This camera is also capable of 4K 120. And I did have a little bit of fun with that. And I do want to say I tried to shoot 4K 120 off of a dummy battery in a power bank. But every time I tried to use it, it just would turn the camera off. I think it was drawing too much current for the dummy battery in 4K 120. I then went ahead and tried my own little low light test by just lighting a candle, setting up some things around it, and just seeing how the image looked. And I honestly thought it looked really nice. It wasn't at the highest ISO, it was at 6400 and I had dynamic range boost off. 
This camera also has really nice stop motion settings. Once you set it up, you just take some pictures and it has a ghosting effect where it actually lets you know where the object was left before, which is super helpful. Then once you're finished taking your pictures, you can actually create a video right on the camera. You can go ahead and choose the frame rate you want for the pictures. Then you can go ahead and change the resolution you want for it as well. And then you hit OK and then just process the video and turns into a video file right there in your camera, which is super useful. Then you can go in and view it on your camera or just download it to your computer and have fun with it. I also had a little bit of fun playing with the shutter speeds on this camera. There's just so many different things you can adjust on it and there's so much potential with this camera. I went ahead and turned on the fan to max and this is what it sounds like. I've had the GH6 in my possession now for about a week and I've been using it quite a bit and I've been learning a lot about it. And I gotta say, I really like it. I think it's a really great piece of technology. Definitely a nice tool, especially for what I'm gonna use it for, which is pretty much videography. I didn't really touch any of the photo settings other than the stop motion, but as a video camera, this thing is super solid. I really like how the screen is fully articulated. You can really have it facing whatever way you want. I didn't end up charging the battery now. You can see it's flashing and that's something I do want to talk about. The battery life on this thing is not that good to be honest. You're definitely going to want to have a couple batteries or an external power source of some kind. Uh, I do like how you can customize a lot of the buttons like this Q button. I went ahead and changed it to be able to quick menu for some of my uh, codecs or frame rates and resolutions that I can pick real easy. There's also a couple buttons that you can customize on the front right here. Got these two buttons right there. The buttons are positioned in a really nice place. I was able to use it perfectly fine with my gloves on. Easy to push the record button, which is pretty much all you need. Something really useful that I like about this is this button right here, this AF on button. It's just a really quick way to autofocus. You just point it at something, you click it, and it just focuses on whatever you're pointing at. And it even works if you have the lens set to manual focus. And even if this is set to manual focus here as well, you can still point it and it will autofocus for you, which is just really helpful, especially if you just wanna quickly focus on something, but you still want the ability to manual focus. Really helpful, so I do really enjoy this button right here. Both of the lenses that I got for it, the Leica Lumix lenses, they're absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm really impressed with this 12 to 60 because it has the in lens stabilization, the power OIS. And if you turn that thing on, it is just stable like a rock and it's pretty much like a handheld gimbal. And I'm just super impressed with the footage you can get from it by just hand holding it. Coming from a previous Lumix camera, I was super easy to kind of work through the menu. I'm a huge fan of how these three buttons are just right here. You got the white balance, the ISO, and then like the brightness. You can just easily adjust them right in fingers length and I do like how the ISO has some little nublets on them So you can for sure line yourself up with it little things like that make it super easy to use even when you're not looking The build quality of the camera is super solid as well It's got like a metal frame uh, the back of the screen is plastic the back of the battery cover is plastic I know that this side door is plastic but most everything else is made out of metal other than some of the buttons so super solid and rugged I'm not really worried about uh, anything warping or breaking or cracking this thing is like a tank honestly it feels like and it's got really nice weather sealing on it so I don't have to worry about rain and snow as much as I used to I was super worried about this camera because I had no ceiling at all because I definitely take it outside and all of the elements so I think it's gonna be great for just outdoor camera use so overall, I think the GH6 is a fantastic camera. It's got really great video capabilities with all the codecs and different resolutions it has. It's got cool stop motion kind of software built into it. It's got good in-body stabilization. It's got really good in-lens stabilization. And it's just a really great tool to have under your belt. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful or useful to you. Hopefully it helped you decide if you want the GH6 or not, or if you just enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next one.